Starfield time. Even in a post Fallout 76 world, I find the prospect of Starfield extremely exciting. A lot of Bethesda Game Studios employees are long standing, working at the Maryland studio for at a minimum a decade. And it's been two decades since Bethesda Game Studios has introduced a new IP. So imagine you're spending the majority of your career flipping between Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Fallout, Elder Scrolls. Certainly there are worse fates in that because those are two incredible game franchises, but we're creatives, right? We want to make something new. And after dropping one of the worst received games in history and easily Bethesda Game Studios' worst game ever, you have a new IP on the way. One that can revitalize, reinvigorate, and bring about new ideas and creativity from Bethesda without being shackled by the past, whether it's lore, elements of the series that are expected. You have something brand spanking new here. That's gotta be exciting. And personally, as a fan of Bethesda Game Studios, I look forward to seeing what they do with this opportunity. Now, you may or may not recall, we've had a lot of new viewers come in, and I appreciate all of you. Hit the sub button if you're new here. But we did have a discussion about Starfield at the end of 2019, talking about if it was happening in 2020. And uh, I made a prediction that may not iron out all that well. Ultimately, my take is, I personally think the year for Starfield is 2020. Look, okay, you can predict when Starfield's gonna come out. You can't predict a pandemic. Get off my back. I'm trying my best here, folks. Kidding aside, with the current state of the world, video game production has been hurt quite a bit. It's slowed down. We're seeing numerous delays. We have now just seen Ghost of Tsushima and The Last of Us Part Two receive brand new release dates. Wasteland 3, which was supposed to come out in May, got pushed all the way back to August. We're seeing delays everywhere. And a lot of that is because of the physical production of the game. Physical media is still very important. It still generates a lot of sales for companies. And given the throttling of download speeds that we've seen, for example, on PSN, sending everyone down the pipeline to download a game day one uh, isn't always the best avenue. We saw what happened with Final Fantasy VII Remake and how they had a very staggered physical launch. And I'm basing all this information off of an article from Jason Schreier, who formerly worked at Kotaku. So to me, it seems like the production of the game isn't really hurt in the terms of working on it and getting stuff done. It's more so actually preparing it to be sold. And not only is the state of the world a telltale sign of what could be happening with Starfield, but more accurately, let's take a look at something Bethesda has done, which is announce that they're not gonna do a digital showcase in place of E3 2020. We had a bunch of companies, as always, doing conferences. We had Ubisoft, we had Xbox, Bethesda was gonna do one. And when obviously E3 got canceled, we saw the immediate announcement of Xbox doing something digitally. We saw Ubisoft was going to investigate a digital avenue, but Bethesda took a very long time to talk about what they wanted to do for E3. And when they did, Pete Hines said this, see, we're doing it again. We're pointing that stuff in our video. But yeah, Bethesda, isn't doing a digital showcase whatsoever. And quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I found this a bit shocking, but it also is telling. Let's look at Bethesda's E3 history, more so focusing on Bethesda Game Studios and how anytime they're involved, they were the headline of the show. That's how Bethesda wrapped it up with this extensive preview of a Bethesda Game Studios game, whether it began in 2015 with Fallout 4, where it got over a half hour presentation, or it was in 2018 with Fallout 76, where Todd Howard took the stage yet again and gave a huge presentation of what Bethesda Game Studios was doing alongside Elder Scrolls Blades. If BGS is remotely involved, it justifies the existence of the showcase. That much has been proven through Bethesda actions in the past. So if Starfield were ready for a reveal this year, quite frankly, I think that Bethesda would have pushed forward with a digital showcase, but they chose not to. So the lack of existence of said show says a lot to me. But some of you may be also saying, Maddie, come on, it's 2020, we're just a couple months in, Fallout 76 really isn't that good, but it only did just come out at the end of 2018. And I understand that perspective entirely, but we have to look at how Bethesda Game Studios has really grown as a brand. Take a look at Fallout 4. It has its flaws, but one thing that I find quite impressive about it is this game was created by a 100-man team. Now, money does a lot of talking, right? This is a AAA studio, but still, a 100 people created this gigantic world with what I found to be an interesting story, not one with the most choice. Much improved gameplay compared to prior entries 
in the franchise. And also I think the Underman staff showcased a lot of the flaws that we've talked about extensively on the channel, being that choice, the writing, and so on. But Bethesda Game Studios is much larger now. There are four Bethesda Game Studios, being Maryland, the one that we've covered for years. We have Austin, we have Dallas, and we also have Montreal. BGS as a whole is likely three to four times bigger in manpower. Instead of having 100 people work on a game and release it every four years, we now have 400 people across the entire brand working on whatever Bethesda Game Studios is up to. Now, each game studio is not as large as, say, Maryland, or as important as, say, Maryland. That is the center of it all. But we already know Montreal focuses mostly on supporting Maryland as well as mobile games. Bethesda Game Studios Austin is mostly honed in on Fallout 76. And Dallas, from what I saw in its job listings, is just a Bethesda-wide support studio. In fact, one of their job listings mentioned helping out with id tech games, and that makes sense because id is also located in Texas. So that's just a central location for a lot of Bethesda content. They also have Arcane Studios in Texas. So I think Texas is very important for Bethesda, and maybe if you're a game dev, Look in Texas. Still, that increased size, I don't need to really spell it out, does say that Bethesda could get games out a little bit quicker. Would I rather them take their time? Of course, but they're a business, they're gonna try to churn out more games. We saw what happened with 76, hopefully they learned their lesson to not rush things. All I'm saying really is don't be too surprised if Starfield comes a little bit quicker this time around. And I don't think it'll be a sign of rushing, it's a sign of they're a much bigger studio now. I know they may not be everyone's cup of tea, but I just look at the Assassin's Creed games. Think of how big Ubisoft is. I mean, they have thousands of people working for them, but my point being is they used to annually release these incredibly big worlds with full on stories, cutscenes, new gameplay mechanics. And I look forward to those entries every year, I'll be honest. It was like a guilty pleasure when that series was in its low point. I still did find some enjoyment in it, even if I agreed with what they've done with the series now. But my point is that while it was annualized, and I don't think Bethesda Game Studios will ever get to that point, nor do I think they're interested in it, but that essentially that manpower sped up the production so much based off how many people were working on it. So long story short, don't be too surprised if Starfield comes say early 2021. I mean, we just have to look at some interview snippets. Sections of Starfield are already very playable according to Todd Howard during an E3 2018 interview. Another interview pointed to the fact that the game has been in discussion for a decade, ideas have been written down for five to six years, and it's been in active development since Fallout 4 finished. Naturally, this is going to mean that in 2018, Starfield's been in full production without any distractions, giving Bethesda a year and some change on this side of the fence. And that's a lot of time spent in pre-production between ideas, planning, laying things out, having the world prepared, starting to build things for the game. Starfield's been in development for quite some time, and I imagine it's probably relieving for Bethesda to really just hop into Starfield and get this thing going. But it's not like I said in the beginning of the video where this is another Elder Scrolls game, another Fallout game, where a lot of the assets have been already made. That's part of the reason why Fallout 76 came so fast. It reused a ton of stuff from Fallout 4. To the game's downfall, mind you, with Starfield, this is a brand new IP. You can't start taking stuff from Fallout or Elder Scrolls. Everything has to be made from the ground up. And naturally, that's going to extend the development time of the game. There's new tech being implemented as well. Take a listen to this interview snippet of Todd Howard talking to Ted Price about Starfield before it was announced. For context, when he mentions their next game, he's talking about 76. This was also before its announcement. And when he talks about the game afterwards, that's in pre-production, that's Starfield. And so usually what's happening you know, take an animation system change um, that we're doing uh, right now. We're finishing for one of our projects, though that's a project that's in pre-production, getting a new animation system, whereas the one that's in full production is using the old one. But those people look, and what happens though is that fuels them. The, the animators in production are commenting on the animation system in pre-production, and they're getting excited for, hey, I'm, you know, I'm gonna get to use that. Uh, when I roll onto the to the when that project rolls onto production. And given that this is a game in space, it may involve ships going from planet to planet. We don't know what kind of movement system there will be. We don't know what combat will be like. Will it be a shooter? Will it be melee focused? We're not sure about that stuff. So new animation system is in place. There's a lot of big important pieces being put into Starfield and 
that's also what I find exciting. It sounds like not only conceptually, but what they're doing technology wise is not the Bethesda game studios that we're really familiar with. They're not the tech juggernauts, not by any stretch of the imagination. And so that can also be a little terrifying because they're taking on new technical challenges and Oh God, if they introduce more problems, that'll be a little disappointing. But I think despite what's happening in the world, we've already had information suggesting Starfield's been good to go in the terms of playability, and it's been in production for a really long time where I wouldn't be surprised if we saw it sooner rather than later. I think 2020 is kind of canned right now. I don't think Bethesda Game Studios has any interest in meeting a deadline for this because Elder Scrolls 6 isn't like knocking on the door, right? Like this game is still a very far ways away. And the reason for that is Todd Howard had said they need the technology for that. They want to do something really big. They want to make a game that people can play for a decade. That's the expectation when they make Elder Scrolls 6 because Skyrim lasted probably way longer than they ever expected. So since this is a project that doesn't need to be handled immediately, Bethesda can really take their time with it. And that's all we can hope for. But in answer to the question that we're trying to pose today is Starfield coming out in 2020 I just think not given the state of the world I mean that's a very obvious answer but I think it's only getting pushed back say to early 2021 I think that this game would have been on track for a 2020 release if the world didn't essentially hit the pause button but now with that being the case and companies pulling back revising plans and slowing things down do we need to have this out by the fall I think in Bethesda's case with Starfield it does not have to happen and hopefully they've learned their lesson with rushing out games like 76 and also enjoying the success of Wastelanders because they didn't rush it enjoying the success of Doom Eternal because they didn't rush it that type of stuff is important to note as well so I hope you guys enjoyed this Starfield discussion I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below when do you think we're seeing this game what do you think the game's going to look like and all that juicy info fire away in the comments down below other than that follow me on twitter follow me on instagram those links are in the description down below along with my patreon big thank you to all of the patrons who just continue to show that love appreciate each and every single one of you and i'll talk with you soon stay sexy stay active i love you all peace